You know, it's pretty fitting that Narancha, a dude who looks like a lady, has a stand which is called Aerosmith. Get ready for a high-flying adventure, my friends. It's time to take a look at another episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Golden Wind. It's another week, another episode, which of course means we're going to focus on one of these brand new characters and reveal their stands to the viewers. And this week, it's Narancha's turn. However, that was basically kind of an afterthought for this episode. Most of this episode of JoJo actually revolved around the introduction of another brand new character who goes by the name of Trish. Trish Una. And she just so happens to be the estranged daughter of the leader, the big boss, of Passione. Now, believe it or not, this is all actually tied to Popo's gold, which just so happens to be in a toilet. I shit you not, this is literally where Bruno decided to hide all of Popo's stash. Basically the most unassuming place you could possibly think of, which was just a public restroom. Of course, since he has the ability to open zippers and practically anything, he was able to shove all of this stuff right into a frickin' pisser. But how does the estranged daughter of the boss of Passione actually tie into all of this? Well, apparently this entire time, Bruno wasn't actually planning on taking all of Pulpo's goods for him. He was actually planning on giving it to another capo of Passione. And that just so happens to be this little man with very twisted, lazy eyes who goes by the name of Mr. Pericolo. And aside from the other characters in the series, he's probably the most normal one that we've seen so far. In the sense that he doesn't have any stand powers, but this is a really big moment for Bruno and his gang, as when he decides to give all of this money to Mr. Pericolo, he immediately gets the title of Capo, and along with it, all of the responsibilities that Pulpo had. And one of Pulpo's most important jobs is that he was actually guarding the boss's daughter. Now, the reason that this is all interesting, one, is because this is like the biggest information that we've been given thus far about the leader of Pacione. No one has still ever seen this guy, and we, the viewer, have not seen him yet. And ever since his daughter was revealed, it seems like everybody's going to be going after her. And Trish, for a lack of better words, is kind of a selfish, spoiled bitch. However, when it comes to a knife fight, don't fuck with this girl at all. She will slice and dice you. But when she reveals her true personality, she's immediately kind of a drag, I have to admit it. She just comes across as a super spoiled brat. However, I feel this is probably going to be a front for her character, and she's only going to get more development as things go on. But from now on, Bruno and his gang have one important mission, to protect the boss's daughter. And to make matters worse, there's this group which has suddenly decided to betray the Passione organization, and they're actively trying to kill this girl. So while it's really awesome that Bruno is now a capo, he now has a serious amount of baggage and things to deal with. A very dangerous mission which could ultimately end his immediate career as a capo. That's where Narancha comes in. Now that they reluctantly have to look after this girl, who makes all of these crazy demands for ridiculous items, they decide to send Narancha to the grocery store, which I honestly think was probably a bad decision. Even Panacotta Fugo decides that this is a bad thing, knowing that he's probably going to screw things up, considering the dude can't do simple math, and the fact that he can barely even follow orders. But they decide he's the best person to do this because of his stand, which is officially revealed in this episode. But before we get to that, we go to the very end of the episode where things just sort of suddenly escalate like crazy. It introduced this group of people who uh, decided to leave the Passione group, and only one of them gets a lot of showtime in this episode, and he goes by the name of Formaggio. And Formaggio has a unique stand which goes by the name of Little Feet, very similar to the American band of the same name, and as the name would imply, he actually has the ability to shrink objects or even himself. He can basically become a tiny little dude. And this, of course, allows him to sneak around and get into places other people can't, and he can also shove a cat into a bottle. The scene itself is shocking, but honestly, I'm not surprised. Seeing cats and dogs get mutilated in JoJo is just kind of a thing at this point. It doesn't take long for Formaggio to actually find Narancha, and they end up immediately getting into a confrontation where he utilizes his stand to actually attack him, scratching his face. This causes Narancha to go fucking Super Saiyan, and that's when he summons his stand, Aerosmith, which in the Crunchyroll version they call Little Bomber. I've had a lot of people tell me the actual names of the stand, and uh, after watching the episode I decided to look up a little bit of information about it, and yeah, it's called Aerosmith, and it's basically just a tiny little airplane with guns and bombs, and it even seems to have a tiny 
little pilot. But getting to see this airplane just fly around and just destroy this car as he's angrily kicking it all at the same time is incredibly shocking, showing that Narancha himself just really has a very short fuse, and when he just goes off, he destroys everything. And despite the fact that this plane is really teeny and looks like a little model toy, it can really fuck shit up. It even has the ability to let these little bombs come out that can just destroy everything, kind of like a tiny little grenade. The problem is he's up against an enemy that can alter his size, allowing him to escape, and that's exactly what he does at the end of the episode. But what's the rundown on this episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind? So many things happened in this episode, and almost nothing happened at the same time. Most of the episode is devoted to the fact that Bruno is now officially a capo, and like I said, it comes with a lot of crazy responsibilities. What is really cool is that these guys are about to get a lot richer. With their dealings, they only have to give up 50% of everything that they actually take from the city. So, Giorno and his friends are definitely about to live the high life, but it comes with a massive price, and that price is Trish Una, who immediately, I think, is going to be one of the cornerstones of the entire series, and mostly because they give a lot of that away in the intro. But I had no idea that she was going to actually end up being the daughter of the leader of this organization, who little by little is becoming one of the coolest characters of the show, and I know almost nothing about him. I can't wait to learn about this guy's backstory, and why he's such a big deal in the first place. But honestly, I I didn't expect this whole Bruno and his gang becoming capos at this point was going to happen this early on. It almost happened unceremoniously with Perry Colo, who's just like, give me the cash, alright, there's your upgrade, you leveled up. Yet, it still doesn't take away from the excitement of the series because they immediately introduce some brand new concepts for the show, which are great. Taking care of the boss's daughter looks like it's going to add a tremendous amount of tension to this series, and honestly, I'm okay with that. I'm always on the edge of my seat already with JoJo, so let's just gild the lily, shall we? There are like a million other things about this episode that I could talk about for like two hours, but for what it was, this was another fantastic episode of the series, which wrapped up one storyline and immediately jumped into another one. With a breakneck pace, the JoJo series I think has honestly had some of the best pacing of any anime series that I've ever seen. It never manages to stop the excitement, and again, this one manages to be very similar and still incredibly new all at the same time, and little by little is kind of slowly becoming my favorite, and that's really big for me, because I love Stardust Crusaders, just cannot get enough of that, I love The Diamond is Unbreakable, and I thought that that was kind of like the high peak of the series, like, ha, there's no way they're gonna be able to top that. You know what? Golden Wind is doing just that, and if you're even slightly interested in checking it out, I highly recommend it. It's easily my most highly recommendable anime of 2018. Yes, not just of the season, but of the freaking year. And we're about to move into the next one, so who knows, this could dominate 2019 as well. Let's find out. This episode just fucking rocked. I'm giving it a 5 out of 5. If any of you guys watched it, I would love to hear your thoughts about it, and you can tell me all about it in the comments section below. The introduction of Trish Una. What do you think about her character? Character. Is she really that much of a spoiled brat? Will she change later on? Can she do more than wield a knife? What do you think about Narancha's stand of the Aerosmith? And what do you hope to see against his battle with Formaggio? It is implied that it looks like he's about to go through some big changes. Narancha might actually be shrinking himself, so this is going to be a battle of the tiny titans. Let's get a discussion going about it in the comments section below. Thank you all for watching this review. I'll see you all next time. And as always, stay... Damn there, baby.